All right, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in today. Uh, so today I'm going to cover just the process that we go through on on getting these oaks, basically from acorns, all the way to these small oak trees. I'm going to break this video into basically four parts: uh, the gathering of the acorns, the testing, uh, kind of what you want to look for, how to test the acorns then the stratification process um, and I'll talk a little bit the difference between like say a white oak and a red oak um, and why it's important to know which kind of acorns you're gathering um, then the germination process and uh, the planting in different containers um, in the spring or even the fall depending on what type of acorn you have the, I will cover just a little bit on, on supplies. I'll cover that, I guess, first. You'll, of course, gonna need to get acorns, which we'll cover a little bit more. You'll need a bucket or some type of container with water in it so you could test the acorns. Uh, you'll need some type of small container. Um, well, and I, and I say small, but it, this will be for the, the stratification process. You could use Ziploc bags, depending on how many acorns you're gonna have. For example, in this bucket, there's probably at least 100 acorns in there, so you're going to need a bigger container than this. Uh, you'll need peat moss or sand to go inside of this, but then this will go inside of your refrigerator, uh, so it'll need to be a container to go inside that. And then once the germination starts uh, and you'll plant the acorns, you'll need some type of container to plant those in, um, and, and this is what I'll... I'll show, um, and then you'll need your your potting mix or potting soil to actually put put in here, and then put your acorns in, which will also show kind of what what we've been using. Now I'll, I'll move the camera forward, and and we'll get some close ups of of the process. All right, the first part of the video, we're going to cover the selection of acorns and testing of those acorns once you pick them up. So uh, I'm going to try to zoom in on this, see if it'll focus. So this here is a, you know, uh, looks like a very solid acorn. Uh, it's not busted, it's not smashed, uh, not a lot of mold or anything on it. Pretty clean uh, and no holes in it. Um, so you're going to try to pick as many of these up. They will, these are actual bur oaks, which are white oak. Um, they will have a cap on top most of the time, or probably 50, 60% 50, of the time. You will need to take that off. Um, we just use a pair of pliers to gently remove it. Be careful, you can't smash the acorns because they are generally soft. Once you pick up your acorns, you're going to want to do a float test. Um, and what you do is just put your acorns in a bucket of water. As you can see, we probably have a couple hundred acorns in there. If they float, they are considered bad. And many of them, are you could, they're, they're lighter. Uh, and normally that's because, uh, if we could find one with a hole in it. It doesn't have holes. Many times they'll have an an oak weevil or an acorn weevil, depending on who you're talking with, and they actually drill holes or plant their eggs in them, and then the larva actually grows inside and eats the inside of the acorn. When you find those, you also want to toss those. Sometimes they do sink, and sometimes they will. Let's see if this could focus in on this. You can see that hole, hopefully. So those a lot of times will be bad too. They will sink after a while. Here's a good shot of another hole. Uh, they will sink because they will fill up with, with water. Uh, but a lot of times these will not, will not uh, end up germinating. I would, I float these a couple different times. Uh, the first time you float them, maybe some are good, some are bad. The second time, you know, some more weevils are eating inside and you actually do not realize that. Um, but you just do it a couple times. Uh, if you do it once, that's also fine. Um, like I said, just toss all these out. Those are all bad, and you can definitely tell they're a little lighter than, than, than these that are sinking. 
Um, that is pretty much testing. Uh, like I said, get rid of all these. And then take the rest of them. Now, if you allow the acorn to dry out, it will start to float and you will the acorn will die. So you don't want the, the acorns to dry out while you are while you pick them up. And I'll show these are already germinating. Um, and I'll talk about why that is, uh, what type of acorns. But the next, the next process is stratification. And I'll show you what you need for that. All right, in this part, we'll talk about the stratification process, why it's important. Uh, certain acorns need it, certain nuts need it, and others do not. Um, most time, your red oaks are going to need to be strat go through the stratification process. Uh, many white oaks do not, and they'll germinate early in the fall. Um, you can see many acorns in here are, are actually germinate already, and we'll cover that a little bit. But basically, stratification process is just putting the acorns or uh, chestnuts or walnuts into a refrigerator um, over the basically over the winter. Uh, and this is not the freezer, just the refrigerator, keeping them moist, and that will basically tell the nut that hey, winter is going on, and then in the spring they'll be ready to germinate. They will not. Mo many nuts will not germinate if they do not go through this process. So it's very important. Um, the tool, the items you're going to need, of course, are the acorns we just float tested. Um, so you want the ones that um, sank, and then you're going to take those and you're going to put a layer, just like you could use, just like this, a layer of peat moss um, or sand, some type of. You do not want to use soil. Um, nothing with fertilizer in it. You basically just want something to keep them, keep them damp. Uh, you could use, I've even used paper towels sometimes when I didn't have peat moss available. Um, Ziploc, you could put them in a Ziploc bag. You could use these small containers like this. I've used actually some pretty large containers that will take up basically an entire shelf in the refrigerator. Um, the main thing you want to do here is just keep them moist. You do not want them to mold. So if you see some starting to mold, you're going to want to take those out because um, you don't want that mold spreading to the other the other acorns. You'll do this, like I said, on red oaks. Uh, normally they'll need you know 30 to 90 days. So a lot of times what we'll do is if we pick up the red oaks, um, and in you, you can tell what the red oaks the difference between red oak and white oaks just by the leaves. So when you're picking these acorns up. Uh, look, you may take a look at the trees and just see what the the leaves look like. So you really you know what type you're you're you have, and so you can know what process to use. All right. So, luckily, as I said before, these acorns uh, you could actually see what I was talking about. That is a uh, weevil. Um, it's a what like I said what they call an acorn weevil or a oak weevil uh, and it actually you can see a hole that came out of this one in that I'll make sure and uh, kill that so it doesn't actually grow to a new weevil or a actual um, full-size insect and lay more um, but that's why some of some of the ones with holes will actually go ahead and I'll show you they could still germinate even with weevil damage so it's so it's interesting. I think you'll you'll see um, some will, some will not. It just depends on how much damage they have. So when you take these out of the refrigerator, uh, we're kind of fast forwarding here because again, these are white oaks. Uh, these are actually bur oaks, and bur oaks germinate. Uh, so basically, they can start germinating as soon as they fall off a tree um, in in the fall. And so you can see these already have. But if these were red oaks, we'd basically just leave them in the refrigerator all winter. Um, like I said, fr refrigerator, not freezer. Keep them damp. And then in spring, you just put these in a warm area, and they'll start the, the germination process. You'll know because you'll start seeing this, this taproot come out. You can see one right here. I'll try to pick this one. You can see how long that taproot is already. So this is, only, this is probably a couple days old from when it started from about this size. Um, 
So you want to, once they start germinating, you want to check on these frequently or you want to plant them all immediately. The reason why is these tap roots are pretty fragile and you do not want to, you do not want to break them uh, when you plant them. So that's basically the germination. When springtime comes with, with red oaks, they'll start germinating. Uh, these white oaks, that they, uh, they germinate in fall. And so you want to go ahead and get them planted in fall because the roots will grow in your containers during, uh, during fall. And now we'll move on to actually how we plant and what the containers we use. Okay, so now we, that we have our seeds either in the spring or in the fall, depending on what type of seeds they are, they will start germinating. Once they start germinating, you're gonna to wanna to plant them pretty quick. As I said before, this is kind of the perfect germination stage in my mind. The taproot starts coming out, um, and so you just wanna start planting it at that time. Um, you could direct plant these, that is a great way to grow the oaks. Uh, the reason why is because the taproot, could, they do grow extremely deep. Um, and so if you already know where you're gonna plant it, you're just planting a few of these, just go plant the acorns directly. If there's still a chance for a lot of freezing, that kind of stuff, maybe you wanna start them in a, in a container. Um, the containers we use most time are these. They're six inch diameter and 12 inches long. Uh, with holes in the bottom. Now, the minimum you're gonna want that your container to be is eight inches deep. And the reason why is because these tap roots grow extremely long the first year um, in year two. Even with these 12 inch containers, the tap root will grow out of the bottom of them if you're not checking them frequently. Um, and that's not good because, again, you'll have to end up cutting the taproot off, and that's not the best uh, for the tree. So we prefer these. Um, the other nice thing about these 6-inch diameter, for about a year to two years, that actually keeps the roots. It's about the right diameter to keep the roots growing down um, and not actually, they don't grow to the side a whole lot. Um, these containers also have little ribs. Square containers are probably significantly better because the roots do not wrap, but these have little ribs on them to, to try to keep um, the roots from, from not circling too much and wrapping around because uh, you really want those roots to continue growing, growing down. Um, once you have next, once you have your containers, you'll fill them with your, your potting mix. Uh, we make our own. Uh, you could buy potting mix depending on how much you're getting, potting soil, potting mix. Um, the mixture, it does not need to be exact. Uh, mine's different every single time I make it. This here is probably 40% uh, peat moss, uh, some topsoil, some, you know, probably 20% topsoil, um, some perlite in there, and sand. Um, I, I did not have enough sand. If I did, I probably would have mixed something like a third sand, a third uh, peat moss, and a, and a third of, of compost or something like that, or topsoil. Um, again, the compost is really adds a lot of value in terms of nutrients. Uh, the, the, of course, peat moss and sand have no nu nutrient value, but the peat moss holds moisture and the sand allows the water to actually drain. Um, if you have ones that the water just stands, it takes a long time to actually get down into the, the bottom, um, and that's really not good for the, for the growing process. So what you're going to want to do, this, I just filled this one up, um, and you're going to want to, you know, keep it probably a couple inches from the, from the top, pack it, pack it down where it's pretty tight. Um, if you're planting, again, this, where they just start, growing out, I wish I would focus for you guys. Well, it doesn't appear. So you can see that small taproot. That's, you're just gonna wanna plant that and plant it 
that's facing down. And then you'll just fill it with soil on top. You can see the container behind, that's, that's basically, it's once planted in there and that's kind of where the soil um, ends up being. Uh, the reason we leave it down probably about an inch is just so when I am watering these, I could easily put a, you know, an inch of water on top and it could be draining while I move on. I hand water most of these um, right now. If, as I said, if you have one that already has a, a long tap root like this growing out, you're going to want to make sure and not break that off. And so when you plant it, you're going to want to poke a, you know, a decent size hole down into your, your mixture and just put it down there and gently pack this back around it. And I'll just leave this one in here because, again, I don't want to break that off. Uh, but that will continue growing um, and it'll make a, a nice tree uh, and it'll start growing. Like I said, during the fall, these, these white oaks grow pretty good tap roots already. Uh, then in the spring, they'll, they'll start growing a stem coming up, uh, their trunk coming up, and then start putting leaves on. Just to kind of show you what one looks like from a year ago, uh, I actually planted these in the spring. Uh, I kept my white oaks in with my red oaks and walnuts um, so they did not germinate in the fall uh, they all germinated in the spring and move this container out of the way and that's kind of that's what one looks like it's probably about you know 12 to 14 inches tall uh, it's growing very well it's probably about to go dormant with we're gonna have our first freeze tonight so to go dormant but uh, they grow quite a bit the first year. Uh, like I said, that's just from the spring. Uh, I expect these that we're planting now um, to grow a lot better roots during the fall. Um, and then I bet they, they grow significantly faster uh, next spring. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, feel free to leave them below. I will be, I, I have some chestnuts on the way, so I'm going to be stratifying some chestnuts the exact same process. Um, I've done walnuts this way, um, uh, pecans, everything else, and so it's it does work. Um, and I'll try to make some videos this spring when you start seeing these come up um, and let you guys know how they're going uh, and also show the chestnuts as well.